This came from Michaels, okay? It's the uh, gallery wrapped thick edge calla, callus canvas. I told y'all I'm crazy. I need a nap. <laughs> so, uh, yay, June. So, um, I want to kind of cut this in half. Not literally cut it in half, but I want my sky at the top and my horizon here at the bottom. So, I'm going to use this canvas or this canvas cover because that covers about half and use that as my level line. So, I'm just going to draw that line with my pencil and there, that's my level line. So, I know I have a nice straight line for when I do horizon. Okay, so now I can toss that. I got a little ahead of myself there. Okay, so what, um, I, I can't figure out where I am here. There I am, I think, sorry. Um, so what we're doing is just a very abstract, flowy, beachy scene. We're gonna add some white and blue up here for the sky. Then we're gonna use our palette knife just to, um, oh, that's not a good palette knife, hang on. We're gonna use our palette knife to um, <clears throat> uh, push in some clouds in the top, and then we'll bring a little bit of cloud down to our horizon, our water, a little bit of beach, and we're gonna do it all with paint, but we are going to use palette knife and paint brushes. So let's just get started. So I'm gonna do white on the top layer of my sky first because um, I don't want it to be super dark. And if you put a dark blue right on this canvas, it gets really grabby. So I don't want that. So I'm gonna put just a quick coat of white. You could also just wet it down, but, but this is kind of just the way I like to do it. I kind of got used to doing it this way. And so it kind of sticks, you know how it is. Old dog and new tricks and all that. So I'm gonna put white on my entire top edge. Don't worry about how you get it on, whether it's straight or whatever, because you're gonna uh, be covering most of that up. I just don't wanna come too far down into my water, because we do want that darker horizon on the water. Woo! So just getting that white on, and then we're gonna get into some blue. Okay, so I'm gonna use this blue here. It's my mid-tone color, and it is a Waterfall Cascade, whatever that is, it's a Delta color. So I'm just gonna use my same dirty brush. I'm gonna scoot and scoot. I'm gonna use my same dirty brush, and I know this palette is off the chain, but I'm running out of plates. <laughs> <laughs> and until I get some more, I don't, I like to reuse and reuse. I don't want to throw this in away because I only have like two. So I'm going to get a little bit of blue in with my white and I am just going to start adding in. And notice I'm not painting straight up and down. I'm kind of holding my brush on its side and I'm going to start adding in some of that blue. And I do it like this with the mixed color because I don't want it all to be just one solid color blue. I want it to be random. I want it to be a little darker here, a little lighter there. So it, this makes it kind of easier to do that because you can skip around. So we're just gonna use the side of our brush, a little more white mixed in with that blue and just keep after our sky. And if you find you have a spot that's too dark, just get a little whites, come in over the top. So going left to right, just like, you know, it's kind of the horizon. And we'll add in that sky. It's already pretty. It's already pretty. Very nice, soft. Sky. But I am going to add, I may add just, kind of looking at my little sketch, I may add just a smidge of this darker blue, which is um, Deep Midnight, just in a couple of places. So I mix that in with the white too. 
So just into the white, and then I hit just the corner into that blue. Then we'll offload a little so we don't hit the, the um, canvas with that big blob of dark blue. That would be sad. I just want to blend in a little more of that color. And this is, there's no real plan here when I'm doing something like this. You know, I did a little sketch for her and I'm just kind of going by what I did and how I always like to describe it is flying by the seat of my pants. So I just do and then if it doesn't work out, I change it up and um, keep going forward like that. It's, all, it's just paint, right? You can always paint over it. So don't be afraid to just follow your gut sometimes because it's just paints. It's just paints. You can paint over it. So if I made a complete mess of this right now, what I would probably do, and I didn't, just so you know, what you would do is just stop. You know, if you like, if you like, oh crap, I over blended, or I did too much of this color, or this is not the right color, just stop what you're doing, let it dry, and then paint it white and start over again. You can layer, blend up, build your layers, so never stress about paint. It's just paint, right? Am I right or am I right? So before we add our clouds, I'm gonna come down and work on the bottom part. I'm gonna let that dry up a little bit. So I am gonna start with the darkest color. Now let me give you a little hint. I am gonna show you a cheat so that if you are not good at drawing a straight line, See, remember how I penciled that line in? Let me show you up close. So I used a watercolor pencil to pencil that line for the horizon. Okay, so if you're not super good at drawing a straight line at this point, and that's still a little wet, but I'm not gonna worry too much about it. Um, you can tape right over, let it dry first, don't do like I'm doing, and you want to just barely be able to see that water pencil line that you uh, taped down or uh, wrote down. I can't talk, y'all. And let me show you. I don't know if you can see it, but you can barely see my water color pencil line, and you want to be able to see that because if you don't, if you cover that up and you've painted almost to it, then you will... Um, pull your tape or you, once you get started, you'll have um, a white, a little white line in the middle. So you want to overlap that just a little bit. So now I'm going, I'm going to rinse this brush because I want a really nice dark line. I hear you, Leah. It is just, it is just paint. And I have to remind myself of that sometimes because sometimes when I make a dog, I get so upset, but then I have to remind myself that it is just paint. <laughs> yeah, don't do what I do. I'm the queen of that. My mom used to say that to me all the time. Do as I say, not as I do. That's not quite fair, is it? So I'm going into the dark midnight, and I'm going to give myself, I'm going to push that down just a little, even though that paint is still wet. <laughs> and I'm going to give myself a dark horizon line. Because if you look out at the water, if you're standing on the beach, Hopefully you're not standing on the beach right now, not on the coast, Gulf Coast anyway. But if you're standing on the beach and you're looking out towards the water, the water always looks lighter closest to you and it always looks super dark far away. So you wanna start with that darkest color at the horizon line. Okay, and so then I'm gonna mix in, I'm actually gonna add a little bit of white just to the bottom edge of that and blend up into that blue line. Just barely enough to kind of create a little ombre effect where it's dark to medium to light. And now I'm gonna really throw you guys for a loop because I'm gonna get this aqua color because this is the main color. This is the color of the week for this chick. So I'm gonna get in and notice I haven't rinsed my brush yet at all. Still using the same brush, haven't rinsed it after I did the blue. So I'm gonna come in and I am going to come down 
I don't know, about halfway now with this teal aqua color. And don't panic, because we're going to blend it too. <laughs> don't panic! <laughs> so, I'm going to keep that a little off that edge, and then I'm going to blend it out as well. There's something, there's something on my nerves right there. Hang on. So I am going to go in to this um, waterfall again, just a little bit, same dirty brush, and we are going to just blend these colors together where there's a no transition line. So you have one kind of uh, blending into the other, so there's no obvious line of color. It's like, where'd she stop, where'd she start? So we're gonna add a more of that blue in. We'll pull a little bit of that down. Notice I'm still using the side of my brush too. For some reason, when I'm working in like a horizon line, I always am like tipping my brush. Use the tip. All right, so I'm gonna add a little bit of white. Get that on there. We're gonna come down, lighten some of this up. I don't do solid color. All right, so on this side, I'm going to come in with the waterfall color. Still using that dirty brush. So you can see that it's like more of a teal color here, and then we're going to bring over here and make it more of a blue-blue. And we're just going to randomly bring colors in and out. I'm going to add some white to that. It's a little too smoky. Doing your, um, to me, painting uh, as a non-professional artist, painting um, Movement, water movement, using the side of your brush, to me, is easier than painting this way. Now, I'm sure you could get some nice waves with the tip of your brush, but I'm, I'm not professionally trained. I'm just, uh, I don't know any of the right or wrongs, but I don't think um, that's what it takes to uh, be a good artist either. So, I'm going to bring this color down a little. All right, so I'm going to stop there. I do like, I'm going to come back when I'm done and white all the sides, so don't worry about this. Uh, I'm going to show you this close up so you can see that I've got a nice blend of colors. Uh, Kathy, are there acrylics, just acrylic crafty paints? Oh, my goodness, Jean. Are you, oh, you need to head north. Come stay with me, girl. So I'm gonna rinse my brush, and then we're gonna add a little beachy. We're gonna add some beach, and then we'll bring our water down to the beach. So for the beach, I have two colors. I have uh, bleached sand, and I have rusted pipe, which has like been on my palette for like two weeks. <laughs> Everything I paint has had rusted pipe on it. So I am going to just bring in a little bit of, of the beach. I'm gonna start with the bleach sand. I'm gonna bring it all the way down to the bottom. I still have a little blue in my brush, I see, but you know what? It don't matter. It'll be all right. See how it came out right there? It's the beach, so there's water on the sand. <laughs> so now what I'm going to do is just kind of pull my beach over to the right just a little, but I want to have a little bit of water down here so I don't want to cover the whole thing. You just want it to look organic. You don't want it to be like a hard stop. Um, so make sure it's kind of organic looking. And now we'll add some of the darker brown just as accents. So I'm just gonna tip my brushes, brushes, I only have the one. It's still dirty. I'm just gonna tip it into that rusted pipe color. 
They've been sitting on my palate a little too long. With the menopause fan hitting it. <laughs> and I'm just going to bring in some of that color randomly just so that the beach is not all one color. Now I'm not going to stress out too, too much about this part because we're going to have shells. We have a starfish. We have uh, a couple of shells and we're going to put some glass down here too. But the glass will uh, allow, or the clear glass is going to allow some of this to uh, show through. So I do want it to have a little bit of something going on down here. And I was a little too dark with that, but that's okay. We will adjust. So I'm just going to take some of that bleach sand again. We'll go right back over. So no boo-boos, no such thing. So I'm going to bring that up. All right, I'm gonna rinse that brush. I'm actually gonna get another one because that brush is uh, trying me. It's trying my nerves. <laughs> I'm gonna wet this one. It's really bristly on the end. It's not a good brush. It's probably a thousand years old. I'm gonna bring a little bit more of that water in and I'm actually going to use this Tilly Tilly Blue. Um, I do think I wanna add a little bit of white first just right around my um, sand. So we'll bring that in, and maybe right around here. I'm gonna bring a little bit of white in. And you see there's just no, it's just not a big deal. It's not hard. It's not like, oh, you must use this color and you must do this this way. That kind of painting drives me crazy. I would never enjoy that. Um, so this is just very random and do what you like. So I'm gonna come in with this teal now and I'm gonna start to the right. What is on here? Hang on. I'm gonna start to the right because I want it darker over there and then I want it lighter as it comes towards our sand here. So I'm gonna start out here Then I'm gonna offload and I'm gonna pull it towards my sand. And if you get too dark, what do you gotta do? All you gotta do is add more whites. It ain't no big deal. I need more white. Speaking of add more white, how are you guys? Look at all you folks out there. How are y'all doing? How many of you people who are watching now are in the Shattered Circle? Have you joined us over at the Shattered Circle today? We are about to get Christmassy over inside the Shattered Circle. It's about that time. We don't do all Christmas though. We do lots of other projects too, and we won't, we won't just focus on Christmas, but we're gonna do some fun stuff. Last year at Christmas, we did the little red truck with a Christmas tree in the back, and the Christmas tree was made of glass. It was so stinking cute. I couldn't even hardly stand it myself. I sold it the first day, and uh, it was really a fun project. So I'm gonna come back over here. That, I love the way that looks right there. I think it looks really nice. And see how, I'm gonna point with this. See how when I started with the white at that shoreline, it helps it look like it looks like when the water's coming in. Yay, Paulette! If you haven't joined, I'm gonna post that link again. If you have not joined us, you need to. We miss you, we need you. <laughs> Come join our family. There's the link. All right, I'm gonna do one more thing up here at the top. I need to kind of blend down. And I'm going to use white on this dirty brush still. Hadn't, still hadn't rinsed this one. And because we want it to be like this. It's gonna be like where the water is coming in onto the um, beach. So you don't want it to be 
plain white, though, because the water's not really white. That's why my brush is still dirty. But I'm going to also add just a little bit of that teal just to blend it in. I don't ever like a hard transition line. So, you always want it to kind of blend organically. All right, so now we're gonna make some waves, man. Let's make some waves. Oh my goodness, where'd you get it, Cynthia? Cynthia bought a red Christmas truck. Oh my goodness, we, we painted one in the Shattered Circle last year. I'll have to post a picture of it for you guys. It was so cute, so cute. Debbie, anytime you need uh, assistance, uh, technology assistance, you need to email us, boo, because when I get off here, I won't remember anything. I will just be wanting to have something on my throat. So if you don't mind, love, will you email us at info at the shattered circle .com so we don't forget about you. You guys need to join. Uh, Carrie, is there anything you need to know that I can help you make a decision? I would love to help. Hobby Lobby. Okay, who's, somebody ask a question. Oh, Charlene, I understand, love. I understand that 100%. Okay, now I want, I'm going to pull this tape off just to make sure before we finish that I have a nice line. And I do. Check that out. Good old tape. So we got a nice horizon line. So I am going to use another brush, and this one's kind of crunchy. Um, and so I am going to just dip it in my white paint and right on the tips of the bristles. bristles. <laughs> uh, did she, did uh, anybody respond to you, Debbie? I'm sorry, I have been at the doctor's office literally all day. Here's my proof. I am fever free, <laughs> fever free today. That thing was sticking in my hair. So um, I'm going to take that little bit of paint on the tips of my bristles, bristles, and I'm going to make just a little bit of a little squiggly breaking the waves in my waterline. So there, just whoa. -hoo 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 -hoo. We'll do it again. And we'll do one like a little closer to shore. Maybe one off here. And I'm just kind of tickling that color on. I'm not pressing. It's just really barely, 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 barely touching the canvas with that, okay? So I'm gonna do one more kind of up here close. And here's a trick for you too. So when you get to this point, if you are looking at your piece and you suddenly see that you have a hard line of color, like you didn't blend your colors very well, so let's just say like right here you had a hard line of color, this, that's a good place to put a wave. So there's your little cheat for the day. So you would just come in where that hard line is and just add a little wave. Add a little touch of a wave. So there we are. So now the only thing we have left to do is clouds. So I'm going to use a palette knife to do my clouds. So what I'm going to do is touch the white onto the back of my palette knife. Now, if you can tell, I don't have a ton of white, okay? I just touched it in the paint, and then I'm going to offload it, okay? And then I'm going to just kind of come in and pat in. I offloaded it too much. Just kind of rub and pat in some clouds. This, this, I'm, I know what's wrong. I don't know if you can see this, but this palette knife is curved like a C. <laughs> it's kind of tipped up, and so it's not laying itself down. A little heathen, a little heathen palette knife. Let's see if that helped. There we are. Yeah, it's hard to put uh, paint on it for palette knives. It's still kind of tipped up. <laughs> Let me see if I can work it down a little. So, you can paint, you know, nice little um, clouds with a paintbrush if you want, but this is kind of a fun way 
to, and, and you don't want it to be a circle or a straight line. Most clads don't have a hard straight line. Uh, so you want to make sure it has organic movement to it and uh, no straight lines or perfect shapes. So I like to do them this way. I can do it either way, but this is kind of the quick and easy way. <laughs> Thank you, they're kind of cute, aren't they? So I think what I'm gonna do too though, and don't freak out, I'm gonna put a tiny, 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 tiny bit of black on my palette. And I'm gonna get a different palette knife. And I'm gonna scoop up some of this white, and I'm gonna come over here to this grip, to this black, I'm gonna touch just a little bit. I'm gonna try to make myself just a really light gray. I put too much black in. So I'm gonna add a little white. It's really easier to add black into white than it is to add white into black. I just got a little crazy. So let's see if I can lighten that up a little. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do is take some of this gray that I've just mixed. I know it's hard to see, it's a hot mess, but it's just a little, a warm gray color. Oh. And I'm gonna come in and just hit a few places with that gray. And I think we're gonna do a little bit more and then we will, I think I'm gonna do some of this gray right along the horizon. I'm just gonna touch it right along the horizon. Then we're gonna add a little cloud there. It's kind of like Sally's coming up. Just a little bit of storm on the horizon. So don't forget guys, tonight when I come back, I'm gonna be back here. It's probably gonna be close to nine o'clock again. So I'm gonna come back here, I'm gonna wipe that off. Wipe off the gray, so I'm gonna come back with the white. I'll be back here um, around nine o'clock and we're gonna paint that other gnome, okay? So don't forget, don't, don't leave me here by myself. Don't forget. We're gonna paint the gnome with the sunflower. So, don't leave me hanging. We're gonna drink wine too, so it's gonna be like a pajama party again. So bring your drink, get your jammies on, and we'll paint. I am digging that little um, cloud at the bottom, at the horizon. I kinda of got into my blue a little, but we're not gonna stress it. All right, guys, I think, I'm trying to see what time it is. Somebody tell me the central time. What's the central time zone? I'm gonna show you these up close too because you're gonna love them. They're pretty cute. All right, I gotta stop or I could play, I could play, I could play owl. I mean, uh, I could play clouds all day. Okay, so we're gonna let this dry out. I'm gonna show you this close up. Ugh. It's 5.07, okay, yeah. So this is our sky. Is that not spectacular? I mean, it was just the quickest thing too. We took very little time painting this. It was what, maybe 20 minutes at the most. Um, so, I mean, we've been, if, if it's 510, we've been online for 40 minutes. So we've painted this entire thing in 40 minutes and there was also a lot of chit chat too. So yeah, there you go. Quick and easy, 100%. All right. So now I am, this is still wet up here. So we're not going to resin until tonight, but I do really quick want to show you what we're going to put on top of here. And then we'll come back tonight. We'll do our gnome, our sunflower gnome, um, 
and we will resin both the gnomes and this piece. So we'll just get her all done in one fell swoop. It looks good, doesn't it? So one of the things we're gonna be adding is this cute little starfish. So we're gonna be adding that there. I wish he was a little bit smaller, but we're going to balance it by using some shell. And then I've got this whole bag full of fun, fun goodies. And these all came from the beach. So I'm gonna dig through and find just a handful of uh, pretties. And then we're gonna add some glass. So I love these little baby things. Looks like snail shell. These. Actually, I think what I'll do is put glass on. Woo. Just get some in my hand. This is a pound of glass, so I'm just using a small handful, and I am gonna lay some of my glass down. Now, I don't lay, I don't lay glass underneath my starfish because to resin him, uh, we'll pull him off, we'll resin, and then we'll lay him back down because a starfish, in my opinion, this is just me personally, they, they turn yellow when you resin over the starfish and I don't like it, so I just pull it off and then resin and then lay that sucker back down into the resin. So just the tips are touching the resin. So we'll add just a little bit of glass, kind of an organic shape. You don't want like a nice little line there. And couple more little babies, so it's just barely a handful. Let me put this back in the bag. Um, the Etsy store is JL Glass Designs. Yes, thank you, D. So now I'm gonna come back in and just add a few of these little seashells seashell into my piece. So let me see how I wanna situate that. So we'll situate that like that. Then we'll add a few little baby seashells, little baby things. Look at that little tiny, tiny little nugget. So cute. So we'll add a few things. I don't want anything too terribly big. There's a good color. So I think that'll work. Maybe one, I got some big glass. Let's try a couple pieces of that. We'll try a couple big old chunks. So where this clear glass is, it'll show right through. Let's do that here. And I think what I'll do too, so this will be ready to resin, is, let me find my nugget dish. Where's my nugget dish? because I always like to throw a nugget in. <laughs> when I say nugget, I mean like a glass chip. I have a little plate full of glass chips. Let me see. Feel prepared. So I have this, this is my nugget plate, and this is like some of the vitriograph, a few little glass bits, and all these little glass chips. So I always like to throw one or two of those in somewhere. I wanna make sure it's kind of small and that it kind of fits in with what's happening. So let me see. That one's too bright. This one will work. Look at that piece. It's kind of um, iridescent. So we're gonna to toss that in right here. So it's like glass you found on the beach, right? So let's find another little baby piece. Mm hmm Yeah, the vitrograph is trying to run away. Uh, this one's a little big, but I think we can, oh, here's one. This one's super cool too. Can you see the color in that? So I'm gonna add him like right here as well. And then we'll add one little something over here, Let me do something over here. I'm just futzing, I don't, you know, there's no pre-plan. <laughs> there rarely is with me. 
I'm going to add a few little nuggets of glass on this side instead of that shell. Hang on. And then we'll put that little piece of uh, glass chips. This purple piece. That's Oh, that was wet still. We'll put this purple piece there. So, voila. I think we're... I think it's happening now. I think we're golden. All right, so let me show you this. Up close, just throw a few things there. And that's all it took. So all you did, create a quick little sky, just using a couple of blues and white. White is the key to uh, the sky and Got some loose glass over here. We'll just throw it on here. <laughs> just throw it in. So just uh, blues and white, some little white and gray clouds. Then we did our water and look at the stuff we added. Is that, that not super fun? I love these little pops of color. Can you see it or am I too far gone? <laughs> I can't tell. So we are going to finish this up. That is still wet. I just put my finger in it. Uh, I am marking the one ounce line. I'm going to mix two ounces. Probably don't need it, but I have other pieces. Um, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, you know, this may take one ounce and that the two gnomes are not going to take near that much. So, but I can dump it on one of my Christmas trees in the background. So, oh, Kathy, I promise you. I want you to go watch the video and look what we did. And I try, I really try to explain it um, very simply because it is simple. I mean, it's really about blending, you know, it's really 100% about blending colors together well. And once you get that down pat, psh, you could do anything. Believe me, I believe in you. So we're using Art Resin. Art Resin is a two-part resin. It's mixed 50-50. This resin is made in the USA, and it's made especially for art, hence the name Art Resin. Um, so there, it's non -B, no BPAs, no VOCs, no COV, non-hazmat, the highest rating for non-yellowing on the market. I've been using it for about five years. I use it exclusively, wouldn't even consider using another resin. You'd, you'd, pra you'd practically have to give it to me and then take my art resin away and force me to do it. <laughs> so I'm gonna pour one ounce of resin in one cup. Whoa, Nelly. Now I'm gonna put that aside. They won't be in the vault, Cindy. If, if, you, if I do a video on Art Shattered on this page, which is the public page. If I do a workshop or a video here, the video stays here, but the tracers will be on the Facebook page. So what I do when the, uh, and usually within 24 hours, I will take the tracer and the color list and post it on the private Facebook page. And then you'll have to print that and then come back here to watch the video. So they're not in the vault. I have to pay for things to go in the vault. And so anything we do here, I just put on the Facebook page, okay? So now I've got a cup. Artresin.com is where you get this. Artresin.com, you can also buy it at Hobby Lobby and the art department and on Amazon. Thank you, see Claire? Yeah, see, it's, it, it, we make it look easy, don't we? So I'm gonna take another cup because if you're new and you haven't been, had a lot of experience um, mixing resin, you need to do it in two cups because it's a very uh, exact thing. So if you get a little too much, then you, if you have it in two cups, you can compensate. If you try to mix it in one cup and you mix a little too much of one or the other, you never know if you've got it right because you just go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Uh, Kathy, uh, the Christmas trees that we did are in the Shattered Circle. I do Christmas trees all the time. Uh, so there are some on the Art Shattered page. I'll be doing some in the next few weeks. And there are some special ones inside the vault on the Shattered Circle. So the trees are everywhere. 
If you're looking for something specifically that I've done live on this page, you should go back to this page when it's over and click on the link or the tab that says videos. And there are probably 200 or so uh, videos on that tab. So yes, they're disposable. I buy them by the hundreds. So <laughs> I get them from Amazon. They're little medicine cups with the measurement on them. And I get them like, it's like a hundred pack or something. Now, when I'm making big art, when I'm making art to sell or for an art show, I don't use these. I normally uh, only use the, these when I'm doing like one small piece or when I'm doing a Facebook Live. Because if I'm resining at home, I'm usually resining four or five pieces at once. So you don't want to use these baby cups. But if you're, if you're doing one little piece at a time, then these are great. And you can reuse them. You can um, just take a wipe, and I'll show you what I have. I'm gonna stick this in here. But I have these wipes that uh, one of our members' family is this company. I don't ever know how to pronounce it, Beard Mac. And they're like art wipes. So I can take a wipe. Let me see. If you wanted to, if you're more conservative than I am, you could take a wipe, even a baby's baby wipe or something, and just wipe out the resin. Voila. And then you could use that again. So I use these to clean my stir and my hands and all kinds of stuff. So now I have to mix. Is Rima here? Is my girlfriend here? I'm going to elevate my canvas, and we're going to mix these, uh, this resin and resin these two pieces, three pieces, I guess. So I'm elevating my canvas so that if I have drips, it doesn't drip down the sides of my canvas and glue my canvas to the table because you don't want that. That'll make you sad. So I'm going to let my phone catch up and see. Yeah, we're good. So I am going to start mixing. I'm going to look at my timer and go. So Reem, are you here, baby? Okay, will you time me? I'm stirring my resin. You want to stir for three minutes. And if you're not using art resin, which I wish you would if you're making art, because it's really the best resin. And if you're making it, whether if you're taking the time to create an art piece, or especially if you want to sell one, you want to use good stuff. You don't want to use something that, you know, three months down the road, it's going to turn yellow or it's going to crack or whatever. So you want to use uh, good resin. You know, you can, cut, you can cut corners on paint sometimes. You can cut corners on your brushes. You can cut corners on a lot of things. But I would, resin is not something I would cut a corner on. So we're going to stir this for three minutes. And whatever resin you're using, you're going to follow the directions on that resin. It's not ever going to be exactly the same. So... Annette, I think they're in the beginning stages. Um, if you're a member on the Shattered Circle, I think she did post a link or is going to post a link, but they haven't gone 100% public yet. But as soon as they do, I'll let you know. Uh, I don't use a, a brush with resin, Michelle. I use this, if that's what you're talking about, this little applicator. It's made of silicone. The handle is plastic, and the tip is made of silicone, and I clean it the same way. I clean it with one of those artist wipes. So you could use a wet wipe, a paper towel, um, a baby wipe, something like that, because a resin doesn't dry or it does dry, it doesn't stick to silicone, you can wipe it right off. Yay, then yes, then you'll be able to get that link. She, uh, we talked, I talked with her about that today, Annette, and um, she is going to post a link inside the circle for anybody who wants to purchase the wipes. So uh, just keep your eye out for that. We just kind of talked about that today. 
So we, this is like, I always say this, but this is like the longest three minutes of my life when we're stirring resin. I'm so impatient with it. It's like, oh my God, really? Three minutes? <laughs> it's pitiful. Like a little child. Like a little child. So you want to stir softly. You don't want to like beat it to death and incorporate a ton of bubbles. Because the more you whip it, the faster you stir, the more you're incorporating air and bubbles. So you want to just take it easy. Scrape the sides. Scrape the bottom and just take your time. Yeah. Even this brush, you can find them sometimes at the dollar stores. Uh, in the makeup department. It's actually a facial uh, makeup applicator or something like that. I got it on, thank you, Rima. I got it on, uh, I got these, a 12-pack for 10 bucks on Amazon. But they do have it at some of the dollar stores in the makeup department. It's just called a facial applicator, I think. If somebody else knows better, correct me. So... Ernie, where do you find yours, Terry? Time is up, she say. Okay, so we're gonna resin now, and I like to start with whatever is on my canvas that's accent. I am gonna take my sand dollar off, my sand dollar, my starfish off, because I hate resin on a starfish. There you go, thanks, Michelle. Uh, if you put resin all over a starfish, it makes it turn yellow, and I don't like that. So normally I take them off, a resin, then I put it back and just set it right on top. Yes, they must be pre-approved. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we're going to have, if you're here and you're a new person in the Shattered Circle, we're going to have an opening ceremony next Monday. And we're going to talk about all the things, what to expect, you know, and how to go about things. So we'll cover all those topics on Monday. So I'm starting with drizzling the resin right on top of my glass. I swear I'm going to lose my voice. So I'm going to cover my glass, and then I'll cover the rest of the canvas. Yeah, Cindy got hers at Dollar Tree. Some have them, some don't. There's no rhyme or reason. I don't know. I am, I don't get out of the house much, so, so it was exciting to go to dinner tonight. And so I just bought mine on Amazon. I'm the queen of online shopping. Um, so there's that. If I don't have to leave the house, I don't world's mean out there. I stay home with my kitty cats where everybody's nice. Okay, so I think I have all my glass covered. I'm actually going to really quick, because I had a little bit of glass under this big oyster shell, I'm going to lift that up really quick and just pour a little bit of resin underneath it just to make sure that sticks nicely. I don't want it to fall off. So, no, I'll just tuck it right back in. That was my insurance policy. <laughs> just to ensure that that is stuck down really nice. All right, so my glass is covered. So now, yeah, the sand dollars do the same, Lisa. I don't like to uh, do the sand dollars. It makes them turn yellow because they're super porous. So I'll resin and then lay the uh, sand dollar on top of resin. So now what I can do is just drizzle. And I'll set that down and I will use my applicator. Look how that color pops now. I'll use my applicator to just pull that resin around and cover the whole canvas. Make sure we don't have any skippies. Now let me talk to you about skippies. Skippies are no big deal. I, some pieces, I intentionally leave resin skips. So if you resin a piece and you see a little sissing spot or a little circle that looks like the resin didn't cover, don't stress about that. It's just a natural process. It's going to happen to you no matter what. And those are not mistakes. 
Those are not bad things. Those are, that is just a natural occurrence when you're making cut, when you're making art. This is not a print that comes off of a computer. It's handmade. So you don't ever expect that you're gonna be perfect and that your art's gonna be perfect. It's never gonna be perfect. You don't have the perfect situation. You don't have the perfect temperature. You don't have the perfect non-dusty room. So never stress about those things, okay? I have four cats, literally, seriously, guys. I know y'all think I'm crazy, but I have four cats. Now, they don't ever come in this room, but I come in this room and I am on, you know, those cats are on me all night and all day. I'm going to rub my hand right around the edge just to finish that edge off. So, you know, I have cat hair transfer, but uh, I try to micromanage that. And if I get one in there, I just pick it out. Sometimes it's too late, and then you have to, then you have to figure out what to do. But just don't stress so much about making something perfect because nothing in nature is perfect, and it's never going to be. So don't expect your art to be either. Okay, so that looks good. I'm gonna push this. Oh, I gotta put my little baby back. I'm just gonna set him right back in here where he was, make sure some of his feet are touching the ground. That one, that one, that one, and that one are. So we'll leave that. And I really need to, I should have should have uh, heated it up. I should have did uh, the heat before I put that on there, but I am going to do it anyway. So watch this. Just not going, you don't want to torch your uh, starfish that doesn't have resin on top. So I'm just going to work around it. Yeah, there's no resin on that starfish. So if you hit him with the flame or with the uh, heat, he would probably turn brown. So torch first, then starfish.